Now, Mr. Uh, Licio, um, I asked you during the break kind of the direction I wanted to go, correct? Yes. About uh, highlighting a reflection that would hit the, what you saw, the latch on the rear part of the compartment on the angle it would take to go up to the camera, correct? Yes. And showing now the screen that uh, is your screen of your laptop that you're working on currently live? Yes. And that is showing the angle that the reflection would go from that latch up to the camera. Would that be accurate? Uh, yes. And on that angle, it shows that the latch is at a lower height relative to the ground than the camera would be. Would that be accurate? That's correct. Now, you did this just for one point to where the uh, vehicle was pretty much in front of the residence. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. So we're looking at it to where the latch is almost near the center of the driveway of the residence 4766, which is the housing of the security camera? Yes, that's correct. Okay, now, with the light reflecting off of that area of the vehicle, the light would have to be on the same side of the street, at least, as the security camera. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it can't be anything on the far side? On the opposite side, no. So with that reflection, it would be fair to say that the light source would have to at least be uh, at the same height or lower than the latch? No. Well, <coughs> let's start with a couple of assumptions. Let's assume the latch is closed. Okay. Then would it have to be from a lower angle if it's closed and flat? No. Then why not? Um, I'm thinking if I do a demonstration, you'd be pro it's probably easiest However you feel the best way to explain it. Actually, do you have a flashlight? I saw I you brought flashlight. a flashlight. Can I borrow your flashlight? You want some reflective surfaces too? No, there's plenty in here. Okay. I did bring a flashlight. <clears throat> do I need a microphone or can I just speak up? If you speak up, that's fine. Okay. So the, the assumption is that um, if we have it could be any surface, so if I call it this surface here where there's a latch, that the light is going this way, and that the camera, it would be in this direction here, somewhat on the opposite angle. So if I go this way, then something there would be able to see it. Okay? Now, if a camera was there, you can't see it. But if I do this, or if I do this, it doesn't matter what angle. So this could be the street light up here. This could be a house that's back this way. This could be, I don't know, something on the ground. You can see that it comes from just about any way and any direction. <coughs> when it's illuminated, if I have a camera there, 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 and there, the camera's gonna see a bright spot. <coughs> so it doesn't have to be directly in line with this source. For the record, he was illuminating with a flashlight the podium that is uh, currently in front of the clerk's desk. And so you're assuming then, for this demonstration, that the light on the side of the truck was a beam. I'm not assuming anything. I'm just saying that there is an illuminated spot uh, on the side. Um, I don't know if the latch is open or closed. Um, it certainly has a, a slightly different geometry because there's a closed, uh, sorry, there's a, a recessed area. Um, and the, the, the honest truth is that I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, all I know is that it appears to be an illuminated spot that lines up with the latch. And the latch just does not illuminate just at one spot, correct? Objection vague. Yeah. It just when the vehicle is at one spot, correct? Uh, so as it, uh, again, as I, I think I've shown, um, 
there's one spot when it's further back, there's, you can see uh, it sort of illuminates, then the next frame it goes very dim, and then it slowly as it moves or exits the camera's view, it becomes brighter and brighter and brighter. Now you took a ferro scan of, of that vehicle, correct? Or you had a ferro scan of that vehicle? Correct. And in that ferro scan, it shows the latch is closed and not bent, correct? When it was taken in 2015 and 2019. Uh, I don't remember the other one right now, but this is the one that is in uh, 20, I guess this is the later one. And actually you can see that it's open a bit on this one. So there's about a 45 degree angle on this latch. So it's actually not flat. Okay. If we can go to my computer, which is figure one, <clears throat> which is a photograph taken of the vehicle in 2014, November of 2014, they took it. The latch is perfect. And there's an identical latch five feet ahead. Identical in shape, identical in direction, both <coughs> without damage. Right? Both have the red arrows. I'm going to yeah. object. Uh, council's question inserts a whole bunch of facts that have not been proven. Oh, we can have two things from the show. It's, it's, I mean, I can look at it, but I can't see if the latches are open in this one. They, they appear to be closed, but if we were, you're looking at it face on. So in order to see if they're sticking out at all, you have to kind of go to the side a little bit. Um, so it appears that way, but actually, if you look at, oh, he's not looking at okay. um, There are other photos that were provided to me that show that there are latches open. Go to exhibit 403. be closed in working order, correct? Objections. While closed. Yes, it appears to be closed. And the forward latch seems to have the same closed mechanism? Or same closed? Yep, in this photo, yes. And then the one up above is clearly a, a position it from a different angle, right? It's more of a, a vertical versus horizontal placement? That's correct. So if the two latches are in the same direction, same height, same closed position, should they not both show an illumination from that light source? Not necessarily, and I, I don't know, because I don't know what the light source is. <clears throat> now, I want to go to exhibit 418, which is the video. This is the video in question, correct? The security camera with the truck pulling out? Yes. And the illumination from the back side? Yes. Now, if, as you said here, at, before you had the showing up of the illumination that it disappeared right here and then reappears, correct? Uh, yeah, it, it, there's a, a, a a point where it's bright and then it dims off like, and then it starts to increase in brightness again. And one thing I want to highlight about this, you said the illumination would have to be from this side of the street, right? I, I would assume so, yes. Now 
And then the car pulls out of the, the vehicle pulls out of the driveway across the street. Mm -hmm. And you see its headlight. <coughs> what does it illuminate right there? Uh, in that area, there's the, uh, well, it's part of the, I guess, the concrete sidewalk. There's the uh, uh, hydrant, and there's also the little uh, plate that's on the metal plate that's on the ground that starts to get illuminated. Fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. If there's a light that illuminates the side of that truck, would it not also illuminate that fire hydrant? And let's kind of let that play over and over. Because it illuminates from the brake light. It illuminates from the headlight. If there's a light that's shining on the side of that truck, would it also not illuminate that fire hydrant? Uh, you're making an assumption, so no. So for example, the light that's in between the houses, if that is uh, the cause, then it's not in view of the hydrant. It's blocked by the wall. So if I can show you back again, but it's in between the walls, so it's a light that's coming from a different area. So it's so not- So if it's the light between the house, then it would miss the hydrant. <coughs> If yes. the light that's on the garage door to the right, it doesn't have a bush in the way, then it would hit the height. It may or may not. And it depends on the intensity of the light. I don't know. Well, if it's intense enough to light up a non-reflective metal surface in just that one little part, nothing else on the vehicle, then it should light up that, right? Because the tail lights light that up when it hits the brake. Doesn't it? Yes. So the taillights do light up the uh, fire hydrant, uh, but again, I'm I'm just speculating. I, I don't know what that where the source of that light is from. All I know is that um, if it was a, a bright, constant light that was on, um, uh, I would have expected that it would be visible throughout every single frame with a similar sort of intensity and not changing uh, as it proceeds through. And since the vehicle, again, we're watching it in loop form of the Exhibit 418, since the light or the illumination traps while the vehicle is driving, you're saying that that light source is staying on that point, right? It's not a brake light. It's not a rear light on the vehicle. Uh, it's certainly not as intense as the headlights or anything, um, but um, it's, again, all I can say is I can describe to you what it's doing. Um, uh, I offered before that maybe it's transitioning from one light to another, that you know one is the one on the side of the house versus uh, something else, the street lamp. Um, the vehicle is still, you know, there's some little bit of movement in the vehicle, maybe a little bit of turning. So again, I, I'm just speculating on, on what it might be. I honestly, I, I don't know. If it was a rear tail at that level, that could be seen from the side and then from the rear, would that exclude my client's truck? Um, if there was a, real, a rear tail light there, um, then I would say then, uh, and it was on and it was bright, um, that would be one feature that wouldn't be consistent. It would be exclusionary. Uh, possibly, possibly. I, 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 I mean, that's assuming that's what it is. I'm just saying only if it's assuming that. Well, what you're saying is, light. what you're saying is, if, okay, you're saying that if it's a different truck to what's here, then it wouldn't be the same truck or something like that. So I would say, um, if that's what you're saying, then yes. And if it's a different truck, then it's a different truck. So now I'm going to go to channel seven. Oops, wrong one. one that you received that you did not include in your report that we talked about, right? This is the light on the side of the residence, right? Uh, yes. Now, if that light is on, on the neighbor's house, that whole area would be all lit up, right? The trees, everything like that, correct? I don't know. I don't know what kind of light it is. I don't know where it's pointing exactly. Um, so let's watch this video. Because oddly enough, tell me if you can see the vehicle pull out of the driveway. Right 
Can you start to see the beginning of the vehicle pulling out of the driveway? Mm -hmm. um, I can see some lights moving in the front there, so now I can see a turn. See the vehicle? Mm -hmm. Watch it again. That's the headlights, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. There's a headlight there. <coughs> and then. bright. Why is it a tail light? Nice and bright. That's what you said you want to see. Bright and constant from the side. Correct? Is that not the bright and constant that you said you wanted to see? To determine that that's a tail light. I don't think you can say that's a tail light from what you're pointing out to me in this video. No? No. Sir, do you remember when we talked about the whole bias? Aren't you showing that now? Objection argument. No. Actually, what you're saying is that you're saying that it is a tail light, and I'm saying that you can't tell from the video whether it is or it isn't. If, the, if that light's reflecting, off of that latch, it's now reflecting in two angles. Now, right? When light hits a source, it disperses light all over. So it's not reflecting in two, it's reflecting in an infinite number of directions. And that's why we can see the light from any position. So um, I, don't know, I don't know what that illumination is. And so yeah, I don't know what the source is. I just know that it aligns with the latch. That, that's, the, that's about the best I can offer you. So you're just going to find whatever evidence matches the theory that you want to reach. And you're going to say, that's a latch, it's not a light. Right? That's an argument of the protection system is not a And this is not Why won't you say that this is a tail light? <coughs> it's not about what I can or can't say. Um, it's about what the evidence can show. And sometimes the evidence can only take you to a certain point. And right now, the evidence can only take me to a point where I can say it's an illuminated area it behaves differently in the other video. You have very, you know, you're at one, one angle here, which you don't, you're not capturing many frames. Um, and again, looking at it from, from the other angle, um, it behaves differently. And so uh, all I can say is that it's illuminated. It lines up with the latch. Um, I don't know what it is. Other than, other than that's the closest that we can get. Now looking at this video, do you still stand behind your statement that you made earlier on, on cross that there was nothing important in this video for your analysis? So if, if you were to hand me this video and I had absolutely no context, so you say, hey, there's a light here or whatever, I would tell you the same thing I'm telling you now. I don't know. Yeah, but sir, you have context. Video angle, mm -hmm. different lighting circumstances. Mm -hmm. You could have joined these two cameras together, right, and show when all this lights up, where the vehicle is, and show how these two interlace with one another to say, hey, look, this is how they kind of match up, right? So the reason I didn't use this video is that I don't have anything to do any measurement or or, or alignment from. There's so there's such little to work with here, and so. Um, Again, I just want to say that I don't know, and and I I, I mean I know you want to you want me to say it, maybe it's one or the other. I'm I'm being honest. I don't know what it is other than that illuminated spot aligns with the latch when I do the reconstruction. Just be clear. That's if that's an actual tail light. It's not my client's vehicle, right? 
objection, that calls for speculation. <coughs> if that is a tail light, then that does not match the characteristics of the 200 Chevy 350 that you analyze. Objection, that assumes a lot of facts, not evidence, and misstates his testimony. Mm -hmm. Um, again, what you're saying is, if that's a different vehicle, then it's not the same vehicle. And I think I've said that um, there are other vehicles that could be or fall into this category. So vehicles of a similar nature, a similar form, geometry, same box at the back. If there was one that had the exhaust pipe and the, the, the brake lights um, and you know the, the headlights and the bumper, and then there's somebody put a, a side light on there, that is possible, and it's possible that it's another. Uh, it's possible that it's another vehicle. So I'm. I'm not saying that that this is um, your client's vehicle. All I'm saying is that the vehicle in question is consistent with my report, and that if, you know, if there's another vehicle that looks similar, that is possible. That is possible. I'm. 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 I'm not saying, you know, I can't make an identification and say it is. And just to be clear. In the video, you did not see the storage container box on the back, did you? Um, I you mean the whole rear end? Mm -hmm. You can't identify this. Yeah, that's the... Oh, part of it is out of view. Yeah, like the, the top, the half, all that is it, it's out of view. All you see is the lights reflecting, the illuminated spot, you and can, the shadow. Right, you can see the back end where the the area which is most clear is the area where the exhaust pipe is and then you can see the when the brake lights are on there's a space between the bottom of the vehicle and then um, towards the ground so that bottom part um, the rear lower passenger side is somewhat visible but not the entire thing okay. so you can see the exhaust pipe in relation to the rear end and ground you see the headlight and the illumination Shadow on the ground. Yes. And that shadow would be consistent with any bumper that has a light shining on it, right? No. Because there's not enough detail to say the shape of the bumper, right? Uh, I think I demonstrated that the lights on this particular vehicle are rather high. And so because they're high, the shadow actually comes rather close to the vehicle. So if somebody were to mount those lights low, the shadow would extend much farther. Okay, it would be the same effect like at the end of the day, the sun is lower in the sky, and so your shadow is longer, right? The sun is higher in the sky, your shadow is closer, uh, smaller, shorter, and closer to the ground. It would be the same effect. So the camera shows enough detail to show the height of a light on a shadow, and not enough detail to show the running light. That's what you're saying. Objection, the state's testimony. Um, could you, could, sorry, uh, could you repeat that? Just saying that the shadow that's on the asphalt from when the brake light illuminates, you can make a determination based on the limited detail you can get on a shadow reflection on the asphalt at night with that camera, but you cannot discern the difference between a headlight and a running light with that same camera. Uh, I think I've demonstrated that the shadow uh, trace when we do the two, that you can s see the general direction. You can't see the sharp corners or anything. We don't have that sort of detail. But the overall position we can um, and then to answer your question about the headlamps um, I think I've answered it already but because of the quality of the video the poor quality we're getting a large glare and so we don't see I don't know if we uh, can or cannot see the running lights and if that light is illuminating the glass why is it not seen in the glass of the side of the side window Because light, light will reflect, right? The best out of everything. Again, you, you, there, there's so many variables there, it's very difficult to say. So um, the, the honest answer here is that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I would have to really look at this in serious detail to look at reflections, to look at what the lighting conditions were at the time, what the conditions of the vehicle, latches open, closed, uh, a number of different things. So I, I don't know. So just hypothetically, for that to be my client's vehicle, there would have to be a light source of unknown origin 
that reflects off of a latch that is in some condition that doesn't match the other latches around it, and it reflects onto that <coughs> camera, perfect alignment, none of which you can explain or show where that was located. That's the only way it can be my client's vehicle. Um, again, um, I don't know. The, the answer is that I don't know. When it comes to these reflections, um, you know, maybe it might be better to get a physicist and, you know, have them do the analysis with proper lighting and everything else. It's, it's not a simple answer. Is it reasonable to conclude that based on what you're seeing, that it's not my client's truck as well? Uh, I think I stated that, is that all I can say is that if it's a similar type of truck that has a similar shape and form, um, that would be consistent with what we see in the video. Um, again, in, in my report, uh, I, I did a search and you know I found a vehicle that has a similar back end, so um, I'm not including uh, this. But you can't see the shape of the vehicle. You can't see the form of the vehicle. All you can see are headlight, taillight, shadow, and a illumination spot, correct? Objection, this takes testimony. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of features that have gone. Hey, um, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Is it reasonable to say it wasn't my client's vehicle? Because there's insufficient data to say it's actually it. So, uh, what you're asking for is if I can make an identification. So I cannot make an identification, which means I can't say it is your client's truck. And just so we're clear, is there anything of the view of the hydrant from this side camera, which is near the light on that side of the house. Can you see the hydrant clearly? Uh, in this one, I can see the reflection of the, uh, or the, of the hydrant. So it does seem to be that the hydrant's kind of in the middle clear view to it, correct? <laughs> I don't understand the question. It's a clear view to the hydrant on the side camera view channel 7. In this, yes, in, in this one here you can see the hydrant. So the hydrant then should be illuminated by the light source that illuminates that spot, correct? Again, I, I don't know. I'm oh, sorry. seeing here at a certain edge and you know the height of that headlight based on that comparison would you be able to establish the height of the tail light when it or the illumination in the rear relative to that same height you know what I'm saying did you get um, I think you're asking me if I can figure out the height of the illumination uh, near the back of the vehicle. Correct. Yes, and so actually the answer to that is it's it's more or less around the latch, <coughs> in the area of the latch, and so that height is what I would have to. Well, I'm talking about just the height of the headlight 
to the height of that luminescence. They appear to be approximately the same height. Um, I would have to look at it on the model and see what it compares, but there's... Well, you have the frames, right? You can see them going across that same edge point. So... No, I mean, you have those on your computer, right? Um, yeah, I have frames. I'm not, I'm not sure if I clear, like, do you want me to measure the height of the headlights in when you can see them and then compare to what the rear? What I'm saying is, uh, if we can go to Attorney 2, we can pull up the frame of that video that you said you can click through left and right really easy. Okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? You'd have a lot better control over that than I would. So go to when the headlights are crossing the right edge. Okay. So right there, you have a, a point or a marker on that. That would be it. Since you know the height, right? 39 inches to 31 inches. You can mark that out on that point, and that would give you the general height from the ground if that was the truck where it would be, correct? Of the headlight, like uh, the or head, the, the lamp. Like the you're assuming that that's the correct height. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we mark it with your. Uh, move that over just to the side. No, just to, oh, no. you can just it. So let's just say let's just mark the location. So you got generally that part on the edge of the screen mm -hmm. is if the measurements are correct on the headlight. That'd be 39 to 31 inches, correct? Yes, so. So if you forward through to the tail illumination, mm -hmm. going through that same point, you can forward to that. It's approximately at the same height. So that's the uh, I see what you're saying. Uh, well. <laughs> approximately. It looks, okay, so if we put the marker here, you can see that we're a higher here. Right. Uh, and over here, you can see a line. So we're, it's it's higher. Uh, it's up on the top end. So if the top is 39 inches, that one's 40, 41, Maybe. somewhere in that range, right? Maybe. I mean, that's a way of <coughs> showing the height, right? Maybe. Is that yet? Yes. Thank you. That'd be for a... Can you do that? Briefly. Um, morning. Well, let's start at the witness stand. I may be able to finish up there. Hopefully, I don't have to go back to this computer. <clears throat> the exhibit 417, which was the side channel light from the surveillance video at the side of the house, correct? Yes. Okay. That's at a different height, right? Uh, yes, I didn't measure it, uh, but I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess and say that they're not at the exact same height. Uh, it. Oh. Did it probably at a different angle? Yes. Would be fair to say? Yes. Okay. And and object also is speculative as to the form and answer. Yeah. Does it appear, looking at it, to be that? different angle than the front porch. Same objection. Yeah, so obviously, I know the direction in which the porch camera is facing, so it's facing, um, so if it were perpendicular to the streets, slightly to the left that way, and the other uh, one uh, over there is more uh, straight towards, more perpendicular towards the road. Well, the front porch one has, a, does it have a downward angle as well? Oh, I think they both have a downward angle, slightly downward angle. Any way to tell, just from observing them, that they're anywhere near the same? It would just be roughly, like a ballpark pointing downwards. <clears throat> and the truck, when it passes the front porch camera, and I would object as to the form of the question identify as a truck. The vehicle, the lights, Whatever's in the suspect video, when it passes the front porch camera, it has its own angle to it as well, correct? Yes. It is, at any time, can you tell whether it is perfectly perpendicular to the camera 
on the front porch or anywhere uh, near perpendicular. So uh, closer to the end of the frame uh, of the video in, that I had um, as it's exiting, it looks like it's starting to, to move straight along the road. But leading up to that, obviously it makes the turn and then there's like sort of the, the, the leveling out, I'll call it at the end, you know, the little, uh, little straightening of the vehicle and of the tires. So uh, near, the, near the end of the video, um, the vehicle is closer to be in line with the road, but the camera is always pointing slightly to the left. So it's not, the camera isn't looking exactly perpendicular to the vehicle. And it appeared in 417 that at some point in that turning movement as it moved down the street, it actually did have a more perpendicular view of the vehicle as it passed by its uh, camera range. Uh, 417 was the, the regular the side, nighttime. The side video, the side of the house. Oh, video. side of the house video. Yes. Um, that was more perpendicular, it would appear. Okay. But the vehicle is turning uh, for a part of it, so um, I should probably look at it again. Well, just to make sure where. Let's get this. Yeah. Were you asked to assume that the illumination in the side of the house video was in fact the same illumination that you're saying is the latch? Or is it possible it was the tail? based on the difference in angle to the <coughs> um, Let me backtrack. Yeah, I, I would. You got lost in my question. Yeah. On cross-examination, did it leave you with the impression that it was asking you to assume that same illumination was the latch versus it actually being the tail? Is that how you took that question? Um, I'm, I'm assuming, it, I, I believe it's consistent with the latch, That's if that's what you're asking me. Um, because of the difference of angles from that camera, mm -hmm. and the angle of the truck and being more perpendicular, it turned out to be, in that view, from the, what appeared to be a greater distance, if that turned out to be the tail light, would it matter? Um, I mean, if it was the tail light, it just, what, what would matter is we need to measure it and then figure out where it was. And if that, if that was a tail light at a, at a much lower height or it doesn't uh, align with another, the tail light that's on the vehicle, then I can say, hey, there's, there's a feature here that isn't consistent. So at least I would be able to say that. But in this case, you did not do that, and why? I, I can't because I, there's very little in the video that you can see. So when I do the alignment, um, there's like one headlight and you can't see as much of the vehicle, so I have very little to work with. It would be um, a rather weak analysis. Not enough usable data. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Don't let me put words in there. No, no. Uh, I mean, I, I, when I looked at the video, um, it was clear to me that the better of the two was the the porch video. We had we had something to work with there. Uh, we have very little to work with in that side view camera. Um, the cost of your uh, re investigation report, uh, travel, and all of that, you're, you would have built that, you would have built that regardless of your outcome, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Regardless of your, at least for the investigation and report writing, regardless of your conclusion, you wouldn't you? That's true. Did the defense ever contact you to ask you to drive the truck Jackson, through the neighborhood? Jackson relevant. I was never contacted. You were asked a uh, several long series of que a long series of questions about comparing the imagery taken by the sheriff's department at night with one camera versus that of the surveillance video. Do we call that line of questioning? Yes. Is that fair? No. Why not? Again, there's two completely different scenarios two different cameras, uh, and from the camera's perspective, the resolution of the camera, the, um, the quality of the, the, the what I call the dynamic range or the sensitivity to light, and then of course the distance uh, to the truck. You could see it was a lot, lot closer. You were, um, you mentioned 
as part of your analysis was some of the unique characteristics of um, the defendant's truck and how they lined up with aspects of the suspect vehicle, correct? Yes. Okay. One was the unique nature of the shadow behind the truck. Yes. Uh, and in fact, you demonstrated how in your 3D model that shadow would change if some of those characteristics change. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, the cell pipe, correct? Yes. Okay, well, these are all asked and answered. We're going to go through the testimony again. <laughs> if I may, it was foundational to the next question I was about to ask. Okay. Okay. You mentioned on cross examination that you did do some type of internet search and found an image or images of similar trucks. Is that correct? That's correct. Were they identical? No. Okay. Did they have the same unique characteristics? Uh, just upon viewing, uh, you know, the box, for example, uh, some had a similar rear box. Objection relevant to the box isn't seen in the, in the video. So the, the box um, would have been uh, similar, but for example, I didn't see the rear, uh, I call it the open box. It's like an open metal box at the back. Um, so, were they identical? No, they weren't identical. But in fairness, there could be vehicles in existence that could be similar to uh, to the 2000 Chevy truck. Sure, but that that open box up that kind of set on the passenger side bumper was unique, at least in your view, of similar vehicles you found. Uh, yes, but I I I think I it's a big mix. So. Um, some vehicles had the similar back, but then they didn't have something else, or they had the brake lights in a completely different location. They like they were much lower. Um, so uh, I didn't find the identical vehicle, but I want to be careful about saying that that open box at the back uh, is is a requirement uh, for the analysis. It could be that that open box at the back wasn't there and the shadow would still look the same if the lights were mounted in the same position on the back. Um, you weren't necessarily able to find one with similar uh, damage to the rear bumper either, were you? Uh, no. Objection relevant is to those no. characteristics. The, um, When you were given uh, the Faro data for the truck, it was kind of, it came as it was. Would that be fair to say? Uh, I was given the raw scan, the raw data. Let me, let me back up. So. It represented the condition of the truck at the time the scan was made. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, of course. So, if a characteristic uh, was in one way in 2010 versus 2014-15 when it scanned the first time in 2019, there could have been changes in there, correct? Yes, of course. Including things like uh, the type of tires on it? Yes. Uh, the type of light bulbs in the headlights or taillights? Yes. Uh, we are all this line of questioning asked for speculation. No relevance. And argumentative. Despite any of those potential changes, you still came to the conclusions you did, didn't you? Yes. The questions about the, and I'm trying to find your exhibit. May I pull the HDMI cable out of your laptop? Yeah, of course. It's not gonna like blow up, right? No. <laughs> so Mr. McGee showed you this, and I'll ask Mr. McGee's forgiveness for what uh, exhibit he marked it as, which was the ellipse. This was diagram figure 16A, I believe, where you showed the ellipse around the headlight. Right. Exhibit 963. 
Thank you, sir. Right? Yes. Okay. And then in your report, you overlaid it in, ex in figure 17 over the ferro scan of the truck, correct? That's correct. Of 964. I have this 964. 964, yeah. Okay. Uh, your ellipse does include part of the run lights, doesn't it? Yes, there's some overlap there. Okay. But I think more importantly is to, is to go back and understand. Comparing, would, is it fair to say, that comparing actual measurements of the lens of the headlight to the glare seen in the nighttime videos comparing an apple to an orange? Well, yeah, they're, they're different things. Why? Uh, the glare is caused by many factors, um, including, and I, I talked about some of these already, distance from the camera, the quality of the camera that you're using, um, the lighting conditions, um, the, the type of lens you have on the, uh, on the vehicle, and even the housing itself. So if it's throwing light and you're getting glare on the side of the housing, uh, that could all affect what is actually visible in the video and to and to the camera, how the camera represents the glare. So with also some of those factors about that glare, the condition of that glare, the distance of the camera from uh, the light source. Yeah, the distance of the camera from the headlights. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, the, well, would the angular movement or movement of the, of the light change the pattern of that glare to affect how it is seen by the camera? Well, it does change in the video. So you can see that as the, as the truck moves, there are slight changes to the, um, the relative angle from the camera to the, the headlights of the truck, and so you can see slight changes. But, you know, for all, uh, for the most part, it's fairly consistent, but because the angle is slightly changing, you get a slight change on the ellipse, let's say. Was there anything asked of you on cross-examination that causes you to call into question the opinions and conclusions you came to in the report and testified to on direct? No, uh, the conclusions that I have, I'm, I'm, I stand behind, um, and I, I think they're, uh, as I said, I think a lot of these features were measurable, um, and they're consistent with uh, the 2000 Chevy truck. I believe your, your ultimate conclusion was Mr. Merrick's vehicle cannot be excluded from the vehicle, from being the vehicle that appeared in the video, is that right? That's correct. And that was based in part on the combination of class or unique characteristics found in this report are all consistent with being the defendant's truck, Mr. Merrick's truck. Could you ask that again, please? Sorry. Because you said, you said unique characteristics. Sorry. The combination of class characteristics found in this report are all consistent with being Mr. Merrick's 2000 Chevy truck. Yes, so the, the class characteristics are consistent with uh, the 2000 Chevy truck, that's correct. And what are those class characteristics? The headlight position, the glare on the front bumper, the position of the exhaust uh, pipe, the outline of the rear of the vehicle, and also the, uh, the shadow which is on the ground. Thank you, I have nothing further. Just a couple, if I can go back to my computer. I'll show you exhibit 417. You were asked about whether or not that could have been a, a elevated tail light. Same thing as we did that 7-Eleven kind of door marker. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. So in the center of the, the screen, there's the side of the house, correct? Right here? Uh, yes. So that'd be kind of a, a static point in the video? Uh, yeah, it's a non-moving object. Okay. So then we have the headlight approaching at approximately that location, correct? It looks like it's it's turning, yeah, so it's, it's there, yeah. And then the illumination, boom, that goes quick. Mm -hmm. 
the illumination crosses just slightly above where the headlight did, correct? Uh, around that, yes. And that's similar to what you saw on the other camera uh, from the port. Would that be accurate? Uh, yes. So we saw that the, the light was higher, uh, higher to the top end of the light. So this would be consistent with that being that same illuminated spot seen on exhibit 417 that you saw on the video in 418. Would that be fair to say? Uh, I wish I could have measured it. And, and done more work with this, but I'm, I'm going to say that uh, it, it's like that's what the illuminated spot is. Um, so, in four eighteen. Is there anywhere in this video that you can see that this vehicle has a square storage container like my, my client's vehicle is? I cannot see the whole the, the whole rear end, so I, I I can't say that there's what the configuration of the top is or anything like that. Correct. Can you see my client had that weird little bucket that was on the back of the the rear bumper. Nothing in this video indicates that that has to be there either, correct? Uh, it would be difficult for me to see that. So the little nuances about my client's shape of his vehicle and finding other vehicles that have that same storage compartment, that's not really what you're seeing in this video. Um, again, I can't see the, the, I can't see it in this video. And you didn't see if you can recreate the same thing and see if a, what, 2007 Toyota Tacoma fits that same video, right? Uh, that's correct. I only had the laser scans for this vehicle. So it could have been a totally different make and model of a vehicle that could possibly match that if you were giving a different barrel to Again, if it's the same geometry vehicle um, and it has the same sort of uh, layout with the brakes and the bumper and things like that. Um, it's possible that you could have a different vehicle here, but it has to, it has to conform to those features. Well, the height of the brake requirement is dependent on the depth of the bumper too. Would you agree? A lower light with a shorter bumper would reflect the same shadow. Well, not necessarily. As, um, seen, as seen on just this video. We're not talking about the ferro scan shadow deep. Again, you're 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 sort of making an assumption. So, uh, is it possible to recreate that shape or something? Like I said, the easy answer there is if you have a similar vehicle um, with a similar back end and the lights in the same position, you'll get the same shadow. back in if I can get it to do it. Click on the draw. It's just an illumination, the shadow of a tailpipe, and the shadow on the ground, right? For the features? Yeah. Um, the back end, yeah, yeah. So the, the, uh, the illumination, not so much because I can't really say exactly what it is uh, because I just know that it lines up with the, the latch in that area. Again, I don't know why. So at the back end, uh, it's the, the shadow, the exhaust pipe, and the basic outline at the bottom there. And I'm going to show you just exhibit 971. Can you go off my camera, please? I'm going to show you 
exhibits 970 and 971. Objection calls for speculation, lacks foundation. Does that appear to you to be still from the court camera with some type of overlay? Uh, there is an overlay for sure. I didn't know it was from the court camera, but okay. That, that scene, like those exhibits, are attempting to show that overlay. Action calls for speculation. Um, I mean, it, it looks like an overlay. Um, I don't know what frame. I'm, I'm not sure what was attempted or whatever, right. but yeah. And the overlay you see there, let's say the one on the right, which is uh, 970, correct? That is the, that is the uh, daytime uh, photograph. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. this, this one here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's a daytime. So, uh -huh. Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. And that appears to be an overlay of a vehicle that looks similar to the one you work with. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And the there seems to be marker points for the front headlights that are located. Uh, yes. There's some points there. Could it be called data points. Yeah, uh, I guess someone was trying to recreate something like this. Yeah, possibly. Um, I don't know what they are or what they were used for, but let's let's say data points, sure. And then the uh, illuminescent that you identified in the back of being the latch, does that line up with the marker on the top of the source? What they try to do? Objection. Relevance calls for speculation. Yeah, I mean. Um, oh, oh, sorry. Is that sorry. what the picture demonstrates of how things were aligned? Objection calls for speculation. Lacks foundation. Okay. Um, Wait, just a second. This, is, this isn't one of your, and, and you haven't seen this one before. That's correct. So I'm just asking if he identified that that's what, how they tried to. But however this was created, that was what the alignment to match up. The impression to see the front foundation. Let me ask you this. Do you agree with the how the overlay is placed on those uh, stills from the portrait? Objection. Relevance calls for speculation and lacks foundation. As to which ones are relevant? Speculation. Speculation. He doesn't know what that is. You're asking him to speculate as to what it is. And what it's to show. Well, what the court was seeing was the clear of the court when he looked at Still, you're asking him to draw conclusions as to what some something that someone else did. I'm just asking if he agrees with the placement of how it was placed. If he thinks that would be an appropriate placement of that. And I'm objecting as to relevance as to his opinion as to what's the objection sustained is lacking foundation for him to be able to make that determination. Objection, Your Honor, lacks foundation. <coughs> you, you, the objection that lacks foundation is sustained. There's no foundation for it yet. 
I'm assuming at some point someone will testify to it and be free to show it at that time. <coughs> One last thing, Your Honor, and then I'm done. I, I promise I'll be fast. If you could return to your computer and pull up the image of the overlay of the truck over the shadow of the uh, exhaust pipe, where you can bring it in and out, you know what I'm talking about? Does that make sense, what I'm requesting? And can you zoom into it like you did before on uh, direct? Wherever you think is the most appropriate to zoom and zoom any closer so the jury can get a good, nice view. Okay. A little closer if you can. To which area? Just where the exhaust pipe is. Ah, exhaust pipe. That's the focus. Okay. I'll go back in one. Yep, that looks good. So can you take the vehicle out and back in? Certainty, can you say where the tailpipe ends? On and the video, uh, yes. it's on the video. Obviously, it's pixelated, so in this regard, um, it's difficult to say exactly where it ends. It could. Let's see. I'll do it to the something that will take the laser pointer. So if you go put the vehicle back on, so back and forth. So the vehicle ends right. The exhaust pipe ends. Here, um, I may I may try something which will make it clearer for you. Uh, I'll just try. See. There we go. There. That's perfect. Okay. So just so you see the exhaust pipe end now. So you change the exhaust pipe to a bright kind of white. Yeah. And the shadow, you can't say the exhaust pipe goes out an additional distance to the uh, left, correct? Right. There are artifacts uh, in the video as you go through. Um, so. What we do is we look at this in multiple frames, and you see if, as it moves, if it follows the the pipe here. So uh, we're at frame 76. So you can I can demonstrate that there. So off and on, and then you can go to the next frame. You can see it there. And it's still there's the shadows not as far, but it comes to the left, right? Sure. And then here and here. Oh, sorry. So um, it's within the ballpark, but it's not exact. Would that be fair to say? Oh, that's correct. Mm -hmm. to uh, Mr. Lucio being excused? No. We might have him subject to recall just in case. Sure. Thank you, sir, for uh, your attendance, and you are excused. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure they know where to find you if we need anything additional. Thank you. And uh, it's well after four, so we're we'll going to take our uh, being recess at this time until 9.30 tomorrow morning. I know there's been uh, Several jurors have indicated they have certain days or portions of days that they're not going to be able to be here. Uh, the attorneys have a couple of days that 
monitoring and another is not going to be here. Uh, I think we'll be able to accommodate all of those and uh, we'll try to get that scheduled onto the calendar uh, tomorrow so you'll have an idea of what days we'll be planning on being here and what days we'll be here. Thank you. 